Yo, so I was speaking to this Goodfellow Fly guy the other day, right? Yeah, I know a few. Anyway, he was telling me that he has garbage bags, not one, but a few full of ties. And I was like, player, that's a lot of ties, bro. I don't think you need that many. As a matter of fact, today, we're going to be talking about the only 10 ties that you need to have in your wardrobe. What's up, all you good fellow fly guys? You know who it is, the Cat in the Hatch resident fly guy, your chief architect, Michael Andrew of StyleArchitects.com, here to help you redesign your frame of mind when it comes to this lifestyle thing. And today, we're going to be talking about 10 ties that you should know about. Now, I always hear people saying that these are the 10 ties that you every guy should have, or these are the 10 ties that you need to buy. I'm not really going to, to tell you to go down that road, but these are 10 ties that you should definitely know about. And the reason why is they are going to work in the majority of the situations you're probably going to find yourself in. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to purchase and create presentations that are going to be more beneficial in those situations. So if you find the information beneficial, then please consider subscribing. I would love to be a character in your lifestyle story. If you have already subscribed, like Drago Savo, or Mark Rogers, then you know I appreciate you. And now, all you have is one more thing left to do, and that is hit that notification bell, and that way you will be notified each and every time new content comes out. So let's get into the 10 ties that every guy should at least know about and potentially have in his wardrobe. The first tie is the solid tie. Now, this is for the freshman. This is for the guy who's just starting out his style story. And the reason why you want to have a solid tie in either red gray or blue is because those three colors are generally going to work with most ensembles. So you won't really go wrong if you have a red tie that you need to pair with a gray, blue, or even brown suit. Same with the uh, blue or the gray. Preferably if you're going to do gray, stick closer to the, the metallic, so like a, a silver type of color. And the other thing that you want to pay attention to is to make sure that that tie is textured so you don't want a pattern on there but you do want it to have some texture if you do something like a satin um type of tie it just ain't really that player player so you want to make sure that you have a little bit of texture to the tie the next tie that every guy should at least know about is the grenadine tie now i'm not gonna lie uh, i've only known really about the grenadine tie for about five or six years so you're always learning something new but the grenadine tie is not the syrup that you're pouring into cocktails grenadine is actually a way of weaving the tie that allows for it to be a little bit more porous and thus will create a little bit more ventilation so it's perfect for the spring and summertime if you do a silk one because it will allow for ventilation but you can still have a wool grenadine tie for the fall and the winter and it will um, just have some character uh, that will allow for you to kind of make that a talking piece when you are wearing it. Now, the thing that I like about grenadine ties is that they are simplistic in their expression, but they're very complex when you start talking about the details of the construction and the way that it wears. So it's definitely a conservative conversation piece in the second tie that you should know about. The third tie that you should know about is the knit tie. Now, we talked about the different types of knits, and if you missed that video, make sure that you check it up here. But the knit tie is the perfect way to create some character in very subtle ways. Generally speaking, knit ties are either going to be striped or they're just going to have a very subtle woven pattern from uh, the way that it was woven. And these things are going to create character while still remaining again conservative for you so that you can continue to pair these in different looks and in different modes. Now, in most cases, the knit tie is going to lean itself to more casual wear, but even if you do want to dress it up in a semi-formal type of fashion, it's still not going to look crazy and will ensure that you look professional um, in those spaces. All right, so now that we've gotten those basic beginner ties out of the way, right, these are all the ties that you can use pretty interchangeably. Now we can start having a little bit of fun with some different patterns. And the first tie that you should know about when it comes to 
adding this to your wardrobe is the foulard tie. Now the foulard is just a fancy French word for repeating patterns. And that's the only thing that you really need to know about a foulard tie. So they're generally going to be smaller designs that are going to be sequentially repetitious in the tie. The reason why I like this is because this is a very cool way for you to pull out different types of colors or proportions in that tie to sub add sophistication to a look. So if you have pink, blue, and brown in the foulard, then you can pull that out and have a brown suit, pink shirt, blue tie, and then maybe have the same repetition in your socks. So it creates a bit of sophistication without being too landish or too difficult for you to try to put together. The next tie that you should have in your wardrobe is the striped rep tie. Now these can generally be broken down into two categories, either a university or a regimental stripe. So of course, if you went to an Ivy League school and you want to promote those colors, this is a great way for you to still show uniformity um, or homage to your alma mater. Or if you were in the military, um, in the Navy, the Army, or the Air Force, this is a great way for you to show that camaraderie with your fellow vets when you are out in public domain. Now, if you weren't in either one of those, that's still okay. But what I recommend is finding your favorite colors and then adding that to the tie that you're looking for. But the bigger thing here is for you to have the awareness of what it actually represents. And that way you can show the proper respect that it is due. The next tie that you guys should know about and potentially have in your collection is the polka dot tie. Now, everybody knows that a nice little polka dot tie is going to have classic elements and you really can't go wrong with any color type of polka dot tie. But what I have noticed is that a lot of guys get nervous when we start talking about the size of that dot. And the reason being is because if it gets too oversized, it can become overwhelming for the tie and potentially the look. And so a lot of guys are afraid to play with those proportions. But I would challenge you to because if you get a polka dot that's slightly larger than the average polka dot, then what you've done immediately is added some charm and some character to your overall ensemble. The next tie that I would recommend every guy at least knows about is the houndstooth or the puppy tooth tie. The reason why I love the houndstooth or puppy tooth tie, and a puppy tooth is nothing more than a smaller version of the houndstooth, is because it actually is very, very subtle in a lot of its expression, but it still will offer a unique conversation starter when you're wearing it. Just consider this. If you have a nice houndstooth uh, tie on, most people can't tell that it's a hound's tooth until they're probably about 15 to 20 feet away. And so outside of that, it looks very conservative, but as you get closer, it starts to add some nuance to your presentation. And that's great for the guy who wants to be a little subtle or wants to be a little seductive because it's showing that you have layers to your style language. The next tie that every guy should know about is the Paisley tie. Now, Paisley is a unique design that is going to create a lot of sophistication because it's not something that a lot of guys actually feel like they can pull off. But Paisley can come in several different variations. It can be very bold and overwhelming, or it can be very subtle in its expression. Again, the reason why I like a Paisley tie is for that reason, but it's also because generally speaking, if you're wearing a Paisley tie, you're going to have several different colors that you can pull out of the tie and create an ensemble with. And it just speaks to your level of sophistication and ability to be subtly bold in sartorial spaces. Now the next tie every guy should know about is the Glen Check tie. Now the reason why I like the Glen Check tie is because it's kind of one of those things where you can throw it on and because of its pattern and the way that it is structured, it'll kind of make sure that you're checking yourself and when some people get out of line, you can check them too, you know, with a nice little check. Uh, but the reason why it's so cool is because it actually has a little bit of nuance that's associated with the Glen Check type of suit that we often see. So I've seen guys throw on a Glen Check suit with a Glen Check tie and it seems like it should be wrong, 
but it looks so right. And it just speaks to the uh, level of creativity and conservatism that can be created with a tie. The last tie that every guy should know about is the club or novelty tie. No, I'm not talking about the club, club, you know, we're not talking about that club. We're talking about the Ivy Club. We're talking about the Polo Club. We're talking about the uh, rowing club, right? Or what they call crew, um, the crew club. And so all of these different types of clubs are often going to be associated with a fraternity or some sort of order that speaks to exclusivity and that's not uh, a tie that you're probably going to have access to however if you are in a space where you just want to do something that has a little bit of novelty then you can still find that stripe uh, the rep stripe that we we're talking about with a insignia or a mascot on it and polo did a great job of creating this um, in the 90s and the early 2000s but I love that conversation piece because it's a great spectator or sporty type of tie if you still need to be formal. Now, if you don't want to go that route, then you can definitely go the novelty route, which you've seen Hermes really make a namesake for itself in this space. But the novelty doesn't have to be whales or small, repetitious, foulard like type ties. They can be something as subtle as the beautiful tie that I'm wearing right now which is a floral print, but still has a bit of novelty to it. So don't think that it has to be something corny or cheeky that you are wearing. It can easily be sophisticated and cool and still a little novel all at the same time. So that is it. Those are the 10 ties every guy should at the very least know about and potentially should have in their repertoire. So I'm gonna make sure I tell my homie that he can throw the rest of those bags away once he has those core wardrobes or maybe he can sell them. I don't know. But before we get out of here, I want you to answer this question of the day. If you didn't think all those ties needed to be in your wardrobe, tell me what your top three were and why, how you would utilize those out in different tutorial spaces. I would love to hear those stories and I'm sure that the guys in the community could build their style statements up as well. Make sure that you give this a thumbs up if you found the information beneficial and share it with a friend. You never know, they may know about some of these ties but still may need to add a few more to their wardrobe. And above all, don't ever forget that dress is nothing more than the expression of a man's state of mind. So you, yes you, should always dress to express. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.